Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great week. It's good to be with you. Hey, we had a great Zoom meeting last week, didn't we? Last Sunday. Yeah, you guys are far more technically savvy than I am. I'm sorry for being late. I just had some technical issues trying to get on uh, onto Zoom. But you guys were pretty patient, and uh, it was good to get updates from you. You guys are pretty creative. You got a lot of nice uh, Zoom backgrounds. That's really entertaining. It's quite funny. And Braden, having your live rabbit join us um, for our Zoom uh, uh, time together, that was pretty funny. Uh, but I don't know your rabbit's name. Maybe you have to tell us uh, this coming week. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well. I am. Yesterday I had a buddy of mine from church come over and help me uh, do some things. And then we went out to Subway, wore our masks, got some lunch, brought it home, and uh, sat outside in our backyard and just had... Had a great time of fellowship. So this week, uh, Pastor Mark is continuing on in his sermon series on the miracles in the book of John. And so I thought we'd go ahead again and just uh, sort of talk about one of the miracles that Pastor Mark talked about. And this is the miracle of the man being healed at the pool of Bethesda, which is in John chapter 5. So why don't you open up your Bibles to John chapter 5. And uh, we're not going to read the whole story, but we're going to read just a couple uh a couple lines there, okay? So let me just go ahead and uh, look at my screen here and read, and why don't you follow along or just listen. Soon after the feast came around, and Jesus was back in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem there was a pool. In Hebrew it's called Bethesda, uh, which means mercy, I think. Anyway, it had five like porches, and hundreds of sick people that were blind and crippled and paralyzed, they were on these porches. And one man had been an invalid, for over 38 years. And when Jesus saw him, he stretched out, uh, stretched out by the pool and knew how long he had been there. He said to the man, do you want to get well? Do you want to be healed? And the sick man said, sir, when the water stirred, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. By the time I get there, somebody else is already in. And Jesus said to this man, get up, take up your bedroll and start walking. And the man was healed on the spot. And he picked up his bedroll and walked off. Now, the story really is about all these people that are sitting by this pool. And, it, and what they think is an angel of the Lord would come down and stir the waters. And when they stirred the waters, the first one into the pool would get healed. Now, really, back then there was a spring. And as a spring would feed this pool... Uh, sometimes it would ripple the water, but the people had their faith and they thought maybe that they would get healed. But this man, this invalid, um, nobody would put him in the pool. And uh, it was sort of a sad, it's a sad story. But Jesus shows up and of all the people there, hundreds probably, Jesus picks out this one guy and he knew he'd been an invalid for 38 years. That's quite a long time. 38 years, he couldn't move, couldn't stand. He had to have somebody take him to the pool and had to have somebody bring him home in the evening. Um, they had to take care of him. And it was just really, really, it's probably pretty hard. So Jesus shows up and he says, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made well? And the man doesn't say yes or no. You would think he would. But he says, sir, when the water stirred, I don't have anybody to put me in. And by the time I get there, somebody's already in the water. So he was given Jesus an excuse. But truth be told, in real, in, in reality, he wanted to be healed. Because that's really what his answer is saying. Lord, I want to be healed, but I don't have anybody to put me in the water. And you know, it's really an amazing story because um, Jesus, he loves on everybody, doesn't he? He wants to take care of everybody, but he just picked this one guy out. And you know, a lot of times I think that we can see ourselves in this man. In a sense, sometimes we're helpless and sometimes we're weak and we all need help, right? Sometimes we find ourselves paralyzed at times like um, when we're able to do something. Maybe we want to do something and we just can't seem to do it. And then we get frustrated. Or sometimes maybe we feel like we're a little lame and we're not walking very well spiritually. We're not walking the way God wants us to walk, okay? Sometimes we're not really happy with ourselves. We're not content. Maybe sometimes bad things have happened to us. Or maybe sometimes we hardly have any friends. 
Maybe we expect too much of ourselves and we get disappointed. Or maybe other people get disappointed with us. Whatever it might be, here's what Jesus did. He offered the man hope. And the man took Jesus' hope. Because the man tried everything he could do to get into that pool or get somebody to put him in, and it never worked. And he lost hope. And that's why he gave Jesus an excuse. Instead of just saying yes or no, he gave Jesus an excuse because what it's really what he's really saying is, I've lost hope. He lost hope in himself. Maybe he lost hope in his friends. Okay? But he didn't lose hope in Jesus. And when, when Jesus approached him and he says, do you want to be made well? In reality, the man was saying, most definitely. So what did Jesus uh, say to him? Rise, take up your bed mat and walk. And Jesus basically says the same thing to us today. You need help. You need hope. I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to give you myself. I want you to rise Step away from the problems. Take up your bed mat, so to speak. In other words, don't go back to the same place you've been. Okay? If you're frustrated or, or you're disappointed or you don't have the friends you want, don't go back there anymore because I'm going to give you a new life. And start walking because I want you to follow me. And that's what Jesus tells us every day. Even when we know him as our Lord and Savior, he still wants us to follow him every day. And you know, have I had bad things happen to me? Oh, yeah. You know, sadly, I've had people try and destroy my life. I've had two situations that were really, really hard. And these were my friends. And they really tried to say bad, bad things about me right to my face. And you know what? It's really, really hard to deal with. And I know you guys have had similar problems because you've told me in class, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to be somebody that's stuck. We want to be serving God. We want to have a, Jesus says, I came to give you life and to give you an abundant life. And that's what we want to have with Jesus, right? Um, so what I want you to do is really think about where you're at with God where you're at with Jesus, and talk to him, and just let him know. If you're having a hard time, let him know that, and let him bring hope into your life. Let him encourage you. Let him love on you, okay? Because that's what he loves to do, and he loved on this guy, and this guy, he healed him, and this guy had a totally new life. Jesus has given each one of us a new life. I know you guys have invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior and Lord. You've told me. I've done the same thing. I invited Jesus into my heart when I was six. And I've been trying to follow him ever since. All right? So read through the story in John chapter one, uh, John chapter 5. Realize that the same thing that Jesus told this man, he's telling each one of us. I'm giving you hope. Arise. Pick up your bed mat because you're not sitting down anymore. And I want you to walk with me. All right. You guys have a great week. Mr. Zach and I love you. I uh, can't wait to Zoom with you on Sunday. Until then, follow the Lord. Love on your mom and dad. And remember what I said on Zoom. You know, tell your mom you love her because it was Mother's Day. I hope you haven't stopped telling her that yet. Anyway, have a good week. And we'll see you soon.